Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We've got another egg pulling video today. And this is um, another Carabiner Versicolor that uh, we've, we've managed to breed. Now, this particular spider here, this doesn't belong to me. This belongs to um, some good friends of ours, uh, Mike and Jen. And uh, they're sort of like... Um, they're getting they're getting new to the world of breeding, and they have they have a number of spiders, so they're not um, inexperienced with keeping spiders. They know what they're doing with their spiders, but the breeding side is another aspect, which um, is often can be fraught with um, different problems. So we've we've decided we we're going to have a helping hand in this, and what we've done is we've had their female versicolor here, and as you can see, she has done some extensive extensive webbing some beautiful webbing really is smart if i revolve this around you will get to see um we'll just just go nice and slowly it's like a game show we stand still here we go it's going to come around here look at this absolutely extensive webbing it's beautiful now you can see her there with her egg sack whopping great big egg sack now she's had this for 34 days now. She was paired on the 21st of January this year. And she was then paired again on the 29th. So she had a little gap in between. Now she accepted the mail uh, both times really, really well. Um, which made us wonder, did the first one come to anything or not? So, because um, quite often is. When we put them in the second time, our females quite often react differently. Sometimes they come out all real hot and heavy and um, quite aggressive. And that leads you to believe that maybe the first pairing was successful and they really don't want the uh, interaction again. So um, she came out good both times. So we're not quite sure. And then she produced her egg sac on the 20th of February this year. So um, as you can see, it's absolutely incredible there. Some fabulous tunneling. Look at this. It goes all the way through. Now, she has carried this. Some days she's hidden behind here, which is cooler, because it's up against the wall. And the walls are cold. So some days she's here. And then other days, she'll come round. Very rarely does she sit here. But she'll either be right in the back, or she'll sit right up in the front. Now, we can only imagine that she is actually producing her own incubation at this point. So there's certain days where she goes off where it's cooler. Why? We don't really know. But she goes off and she disappears where it's nice and cool. And she'll probably only be around there for 24 hours. And then the next day, we'll see her right out on the front glass and she's pushing the egg sac up to the front glass, which is basically shining into the, the centre of the room. And um, the heat, obviously, is warmer at the front than it is at the back. Now, it might only be a degree or two. It could even be less than that. We don't really know. But it's very, very interesting. Now, another thing that we've noticed with this particular spider as well, <coughs> excuse me, is you'll notice there's no blackout boards on this tank at all. So she has been open to um, the what's going on in the room regarding the lighting, me moving up and down when I'm feeding other spiders and things like this. She's just been up on the rack with all the others. Um, so it's a very, very interesting thing that she's not had any um, security issues, if you like. She's felt quite comfortable being in the open. So she's obviously a very steady spider. So again, we've got others. There's one of my verses there, absolutely nervous as anything. I think she suffers from agoraphobia. She very rarely comes out. So, you know, this is how individual our spiders are. And I'm always um, saying to you guys, you must relax with your spiders because they all behave totally differently. So even though you've got, I mean, we've got three of these in the room at the moment and they all behave differently. So read between the lines and find out where your spider fits. Right then, I think it's time we uh, take this egg sack away. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the top off. It looks like a very good egg sac. It looks nice and full and fluffy. Now, as I was saying before, 
we don't generally um, do this type of thing. This is only because these are very good friends of ours that um, we ventured into this. Because unfortunately, with the um, with the breeding side of things, it's fraught with um, with problems and danger, and sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So we generally don't get involved with breeding projects with other with other people. Uh, not sure how I'm going to do this. Doing her coming up here. That's a girl, come on. I can get a bit more room. Oh, there we have it. Now that wasn't too bad. We're going to put the lid back on her. Well, we'll give her a few minutes and then we'll offer her some food. All right, let's see whether this is good or bad. It's difficult, can't feel anything. All right, again, you can see the, the structure of the egg sac here. You can see where this was the outside. This is the mat that they lay on the floor all around the outside here. If you imagine they, they lay a mat on the floor, then they lay their eggs on top of the mat. And then what they do is they web over the top like that. And that's what creates this portion of the egg sac. Yeah. And then once that's laid over, they pull the edges of the mat, which is this, and they pull it in like that. And they cover it up. All right, so let's open this up. This is the moment of truth. It doesn't feel very heavy. Fingers crossed. Oh yes. Got a little applause there from the, the room inmates. Inmates? <laughs> Try and open this up. There's so many layers. Don't want to squash a spider. There we go. Look at that. There we go. Another successful. Carabiner Versicolor. And they're actually, they're at a nice stage now. So we can move them over into our nursery pot. And we can see what we got. That is absolutely wonderful. So what we will do, we have our nursery pot already made up. It's always important that you get yourself prepared. What we're going to do now, we, we will literally just tip these out. And then like so. Give it a little shake. There's always a few in there, look.
very very fine webbing nearly there last one there we go all we can do is we can just separate them a little bit spread them out it doesn't look like a huge sack but I think you'll be surprised at how many there is Lovely. So that's another fine result. We will um, take a photograph. And you can see our female, she's on the move a little bit now. So we will give her we will give her a little bit of food in a minute. You can see she's nice and calm. I should imagine what she wants more than anything is a drink. There we go. I'll just give her a light spray in here. Does she run away or does she drink? What we're doing is we're just dripping a little bit of water down onto them. There you go, she's thirsty. See, she's getting a drink from that. Yes, a bit whipped up. But... Yeah. Right, well, we will leave her to it for a little while. We'll just let her settle down. Well, that is absolutely brilliant news. Things are going really, really well in the breeding programs at the moment. And um, I put a lot of this down to the actual conditioning and how we prepare our spiders. And also some of the timescales in when we actually put our males in with our females. It's not just a case of throwing two spiders together. And the more that we're doing, the more we're learning all the time. So this is an absolutely wonderful result. Very, very pleased. As I'm sure Jen and Mike will be as well. You've got some babies coming. <laughs> Marvellous news. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spiders. And I'll see you soon, guys.